Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, despite the sombre tone here in Westminster, the EU referendum fight has continued today with only two days of campaigning left. So with me now is our political editor, Gary Gibbon. Gary, let's start on the debate. It was extraordinary, wasn't it? I mean, I don't remember anything quite like it. Do you? Amazingly charged. The Commons has gone in recently for a few more sort of human moments, applause, the rest of it, but I've never seen anything like this. And what happened as you sat there watching uh, the tributes being paid was uh, how friends of Joe Cox's um, realised very quickly that the whole family were up there in the balcony. Other MPs uh, slowly cottoned on to this as well. And you couldn't take your eyes off them. Um, it was immensely an uh, emotional thing to watch the children there playing, reading books, uh, the husband uh, incredibly controlled. And at the end, an image I'll never forget, uh, Joe's mother and father standing up, along with the rest of the family, sister and others, and clapping and thanking the MPs for what they'd said. It was extremely moving. Um, it was a pause in the campaign, though, wasn't it? And the campaign has now resumed, that EU referendum campaign. Yes, it'll never be uh, back quite where it was because these events have uh, shadowed uh, everything. But uh, it started this morning with the news that uh, former Conservative uh, chairwoman said of Wasi had decided to leave uh, the Leave campaign and go over to the Remain campaign. Uh, Leave campaign said we didn't even know she was here, which is a little bit rude because she had actually come out on their uh, side and she cited the tone of the campaign and said it had been uh, fairly unacceptable. Uh, I, I caught up with the Chancellor a little earlier and put that to him. You'll see that in the report just coming. But in the last few minutes we've heard that a Vote Leave board member has just had to resign because it turns out uh, that she uh, tweeted some uh, pretty disobliging remarks about the Muslim uh, population and, and the Guardian have dug into that. So this is how it's all looking with just only uh, a full two days left of campaigning to go. This poster launch, the morning of Joe Cox's murder, has become the most contested image in an acrimonious campaign. UKIP leader says it's now been demonised for political gain by the Remain campaign to try to link his side with what one Labour MP today called a political assassination. I, I simply find it difficult to believe uh, that the establishment, the Remain side, can even attempt to link the actions of one madman with the debate we've had in this referendum. The Labour MP and friend of Joe Cox who called her killing an assassination said she would have condemned the poster if she'd lived long enough to comment on it. When insecurity, fear and anger are used to light a fuse, then an explosion is inevitable. The UKIP donor Aaron Banks, who helps to run the Leave.eu campaign, tweeted that Mr Kinnock was a fool as well as an opportunist. This evening, Mr Banks told LBC Radio that he'd done private polling on whether the killing of Joe Cox could affect Thursday's result. Isn't it rather tasteless to poll that it's a very tragic event? I don't think so. I think a lot of people listening to this will think it's very tasteless. Well, you may think that, I don't. So w what did you hope to get from it? We're hoping to see what the effect of, of the event was. Cabinet member and Vote Leave campaigner Chris Grayling said the UKIP poster had been a mistake. Well, I've said I thought that the UKIP poster last week was wrong. It was the, uh, the wrong thing to do and the wrong area to focus on for this campaign. We need to create a positive vision for Britain. The Chancellor was campaigning at McLaren's sports car production line in Surrey. Yesterday, he said the UKIP poster had echoes of 1930s Nazi propaganda. When I spoke to him earlier, I started by asking him if he thought the official Vote Leave campaign, run by some of his fellow Tory cabinet ministers, had strayed into similar territory. Well, I think those campaigning for Leave have mounted a number of totally unsubstantiated claims, things that are blatantly untrue, whether it's about you know, millions of Turkish people coming here in the next couple of years, or indeed that Farage poster. And they essentially allowed Nigel Farage and his vision of Britain to take over their campaign. And so they have wandered into his well, terrain. Well, whether they've done it by mistake or not is for them to explain. But I think 
what people want in this debate, particularly with just a couple of days to go before they vote, are the facts and the reasoned arguments, not the inflammatory rhetoric. Yesterday, Jeremy Corbyn said what some people will think is one of the most honest sentences to have been uttered in this campaign, that for as long as we're in the EU, there can be no upper limit on net migration numbers. He's right, isn't he? Well, it? I don't accept that because well, of course I, mean, that, I think we can stand no, hold on, I mean, we, can, we can control immigration. First of all, we say you can't abuse the freedom of movement and come here. Yes, but you don't think most people are abusing it. Well, the overall net migration figure cannot be controlled as long as we're in the EU. He well, spoke the truth, I, didn't he? I, I don't agree with that. I think we can bring net migration down by A, dealing with people who are from outside the EU, B, by making sure people only come here to claim a job, to move to work, C, by seeing the other European economies now grow. We've had this extraordinary period, Gary, you know, for the last few Even years. Even under the well, projections well, yeah. of the OBR, with that growth factored yeah. in, there is an awful lot of people coming here, hundreds of thousands of people coming here. Well, Gary, let's be clear. First of all, the projections are that immigration falls in yes, this country. But I'm, I'm and, using and, those projections. And, and, second, comes down to and second, you do not control a migration. That still means you, you can, millions you, over the coming decades. You can, you can recognise people's concerns about migration, but that doesn't lead you to conclude that that problem, which all Western democracies face, is going to be solved by quitting the EU. You know, the evidence is that actually, A, you might even see net migration go up, and B, you would be damaging your economy. David Cameron has talked about Britain now on the precipice, staring into the abyss. What kind of responsible statesmanship is it to bring a whole country to the abyss, to the precipice? Well, we have got... A, That's what you two did, Britain has got according a, to you. Britain has got a very big decision to make on Thursday. And every reputable economic voice out there, from businesses like this, to Nobel Prize winning economists today, to our top entrepreneurs, to our trade unions, are all telling us there is a very serious economic risk if we quit the EU. And people want to pay heed to that. And I would say, you know, I would say to your viewers, you know, if you don't want to leave the EU, if you have doubts about the consequences of leaving the EU, then make sure you vote. Make sure you vote. If Remain wins narrowly, this will be a very divided, very angry country. The question of Europe will not have been settled. This whole referendum has been a disaster, hasn't it, of your making? This is, this is the big democratic question that has hung over our country for all of my adult lifetime, which is what is, people, our, what is what is our relationship? who wanted you to call this, not the entire country. This has been an issue ever since you know, I was back at college. And what has happened is that we have this enormous exercise in democracy. We should take pride that as a country, we can have this debate, we can have a democratic debate, we can entrust the people of this country with this big decision. But they are entitled in the last few days to facts and reasoned arguments. They not, don't feel they've got that from you. They don't seem to be listening. They think your rhetoric. numbers are exaggerated, well, the, the way you've played with I numbers. I think actually the public are listening. You know, even it's to, febrile is the, what they the, think. The public are listening to voices, whether it's Formula One and the Premier League, or car manufacturers across Britain today, or small businesses, or great business entrepreneurs like Richard Branson, or Nobel Prize winning economists, or indeed, you know, the people in their local corner shop who just say to them, you know what, I don't want to wake up on Friday with a load of uncertainty, having walked through a door we can't walk back through. People want security and stability. And if we vote to remain in the EU, Britain will be stronger, safer and better off. George Osborne speaking to our political editor, Gary Gibbon. Well, I'm joined now by Nigel Farage, the UKIP leader, from his final rally of the campaign at Gateshead. Nigel Farage, your poster has been taken by many people as deeply offensive, upsetting, racist, anti-Muslim. Would you like to apologise to them tonight? Well, you know, I, I issued a very similar poster to that two months before uh, with very little debate. Uh, the problem with the poster wasn't the image. After all, it appeared on all of our front page newspapers and the strap line, the EU has failed us all. You know, what I'm saying is that what Mrs Merkel did last year uh, has led to a huge crisis inside the European Union. Add that to the euro crisis and what on earth are we doing there uh, as members of this failing union? OK, the so no apology. was, of I course... Mean, do, you, do you see... Well, well hang the, on, hang on. Well, no, no, hang on, hang on. No, let me, let me finish the point. Do you see yeah. that why people would regard this as xenophobic and racist? I mean, there you are in front of a poster full of brown faces on the move coming into Europe with a big banner headline saying breaking point. The only white face has been obscured by text. Many people took that as deeply offensive. And I ask you again, do you want to take this opportunity to say sorry? 
Well, the Schengen zone is at breaking point. That's undeniable. Um, the picture was true. It wasn't doctored. But what I apologise for is the timing. Uh, you know, some people have, have been given the impression uh, that somehow we issued this poster after the appalling uh, murder in the street that took place. We no, did not. No, nobody said it was that. And I don't before, want to bring the joke off killing And that was really incidents. unfortunate. And, and, we, and after that, we withdrew it and we stopped campaigning. Now, we're issuing a whole series of posters. That was the first of six. The second series were in the newspapers today. There'll be more tomorrow. The trouble is, Mr Farage, that, you know, and I, let's keep the whole question of Joe Cox out of this particular discussion, because, yeah. you know, nobody I'm aware of has accused, accused you of getting, uh, of, of releasing it after what happened. Um, you know, you have said a series of provocative things to do with uh, foreigners. You've talked about, you know, you, you accuse Peter Mandelson of rubbing, rubbing our noses in diversity. Um, you've accused Baroness Varsi effectively of lying uh, today, and it comes on the back of this uh, this, this poster that, again, I say it doesn't have any white faces. It was about Syrian refugees. It had nothing well, to do what, with what, European what, migration. They weren't that, Polish or, that or anything is, like that. But, but that is the crisis that has affected Europe over the course of the last well, 16 months. Well, how did it affect Britain? How many of those people got to Britain? Because Britain... You don't seem to understand. We are members of a political union. Despite the fact we're opted out, I'm pleased to say, of some bits of it, we're still a member of that union, and it's a union that's failing, and I don't want us to stay part of this failure. Yeah, but how many of those people free. in the poster made it to Britain? None. Uh, well, that is not what the poster was about. It, as I say, the EU has failed us all. You said breaking point. You, well, what I can... Well, the Schengen zone, with barriers going up everywhere, is, I think... We're not in Schengen. ...at breaking point. Schengen is a, is a big part of the European Union, as is the Eurozone, and one of the, one of the answers that the EU is trying to come up with is a common immigration policy. Now, once again, we'll be told by British politicians we'll opt out of it, but every time the EU broadens, deepens, moves ahead, we get dragged a little bit in its wake. The EU is a failure. It doesn't represent the modern 21st century. There are Eurosceptic movements growing up on the north, south, east and west of the European Union, and I very much hope uh, that what we do on Thursday uh, is to give hope to people who believe in democracy in the other countries my, too. My point is that in, in accusing politicians like the Prime Minister and Baroness Varsi of lying, of running posters like this, of, of accusing the Labour Party of rubbing our noses in diversity, uh, whatever that may mean, you are part well, of on. what has dragged British politics into the gutter. Really? So this is the Prime Minister who put poster trucks round London two, two years ago saying if you're an illegal immigrant we're coming to get you. He can account for what he does this, and, and we will ask him when we get a chance. This I'm asking you minister. to account for this what you've Prime done. Minister. No, don't attack who, him. Account for what you've ago, done. I didn't mock up a poster truck. I put a factual photograph as one of a series of six posters in the last week of a campaign that reflected the truth. When did well, you approve you, that image? That poster and on. Sorry? When did you approve that image? When? Uh, the week before. Because the week before. So, so Along you... with the other images that you'll see tomorrow and going on. Look. Nobody, nobody thinks that Mrs Merkel got this right last year. I certainly don't. Um, and I don't think a growing number of the electors inside the EU think so either. Yeah, the point is none of those people are coming to Britain, Mr Farage. That may well be a problem for Angela Merkel and Germany. It's not a problem for British voters this Thursday. Well, it is because we're part of a union that isn't working, is dysfunctional, is backward-looking and is holding our country back. And there is, there is a big debate about the 508 million people that have EU passports. And believe you me, the impacts of that on schools, on hospitals, on housing, on wages, these are the kind of things that voters in Newcastle are going to make their minds up on over the course of the next couple of days. And I, I would still say that this is the number one determinant in terms of how people will go out and vote on Thursday. Your colleague, Aaron Banks, is polling on the impact of the killing of Joe Cox. Did you, did you approve that as well? And what do you think of it? He's not a colleague of mine. He works for a different organisation. And I, 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 and I would expect... I, I think YouGov have an opinion poll coming out in one of the main national newspapers tomorrow 
where they will poll the effects uh, of what's happened to British opinion post this awful tragedy. Do you think it's tacky? Uh, if you, I, I mean, ask you, Gov, whether they should close down. I've no idea. I think there'll be lots of people polling to see what the effect of this is. It may be deeply cynical, uh, but, but, I mean, that's the way the polling industry works. Just, just on immigration again, as you seem to think it is the big issue for, yeah. for Thursday. I mean, I do. you know, do you not see that, you know, all, all the experts, who I know you like to disparage, say that we need a much greater level of immigration than you're comfortable with to maintain Britain's growth in GDP? Well, of course, Mr Osborne and others will tell you, mass immigration is good because it gives an increase in GDP. What it doesn't give is an increase in GDP per capita. And, you know, Which has also even gone if up. we looked at different surveys... GDP per capita looked at has gone up. Surveys, ..and if we said, uh, for those earning good money, yes, not for those earning average money, and that's the point. What we've had is that's a massive That's not how it's worked out, Mr Farage. I've got the numbers here. ..of unskilled and semi-skilled labour. And, and, and GDP per say, capita has gone up for six morning, years in a row. There was a report... There was a report out You've this morning... You've got to get your facts right. ..that the effects that the effects of net migration were negative on the British economy. Others say it's positive. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll meet you in the middle. Let's say it's about even. But one thing for certain, there are other issues than money. It's called quality of life. And the quality of life for people on average incomes in this country is diminishing with the population rising at half a million people a year. And we have a chance on Thursday to take back control of our borders so that a British Parliament and government can set the right levels. Nigel Farage, thank you very much indeed.